Well, thank you very much, Marianne, and uh, I'd like to begin by thanking you all for uh, finding time to attend uh, our second uh, business forum, the first one we organized two years ago. Uh, last year we, we skipped because of the uh, epidemiological situation, so this year we recognize the potential to continue this, we believe, uh, already nice tradition. Uh, which aims at bringing people from the business community together and um, you know, exchanging information and presenting what we believe are uh, considerable uh, potentials for new investments in the, in the city of Podgorica. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank our um, friends from other cities for finding time to be with us on this occasion, uh, which is not easy. It's not easy under normal circumstances, given that it's the end of the year, so we all have a lot to do around this time of the year, and in particular, uh, having in mind the, the still very complex uh, situation uh, concerning uh, the, the corona uh, crisis. So I'd like to thank uh, uh, my, my friend, the mayor of Rijeka, Mr. Filipovic, I'd also like to uh, thank our friends from the, uh, the government of the city of Moscow. I'd like to thank our friends from the, uh, the government of the city of Kiev. So uh, this year we really have a, a very interesting um, uh, structure of, of guests and uh, we're more than happy to, uh, to share our views on these and many other um, topics with them and with everyone else who is present at this, at this, at this panel. So uh, I'd like to be brief. Uh, we, uh, I believe, share the destiny of pretty much all the cities, not only in Montenegro, but in the region and beyond when it comes to facing uh, socioeconomic consequences of uh, corona. We are all aware of how difficult it is uh, to, first of all, uh, maintain uh, financial stability, not to mention uh, to keep the focus on, on the investment. Uh, I believe that we have uh, succeeded in the city of Podgorica to, to, to a great extent uh, to, to do so. Uh, I'd like to remind you that we have started in 2018 as the then new city administration. Uh, and. Uh, in comparison with, with that year, we have managed uh, over the span of two years to increase the city budget for 50%. So last year, we uh, not only managed to um, realize the budget, uh, which was pretty ambitiously aimed, given that we had not had in mind or could not have envisaged uh, Corona, which uh, kicked in March 2020, uh, but we managed to surpass these these goals. So the last year we finished with the record high realization of, of the budget of 105 uh, percent, with a total amount of 94 million euros. Uh, this year we plan a budget 93.5 million. With that amount of money, we can uh, keep uh, the pretty high pace of uh, development of Podgorica. Uh, as we all know, many Western Balkan cities uh, considerably lag behind, say, Western European cities when it comes to the state of infrastructure, which is why we need to keep the focus on the investment, and we managed to do so this year as well. I'm very proud to, to uh, share uh, with you the information that we've uh, uh, spent, actually, most of the money from our city budget on the, on the capital investment, which, which, is, which is pretty rare, not only in Montenegro, but uh, beyond. Uh, some figures are even better than uh, last year. Uh, so when uh, we look at the property tax, uh, our income is record high. We've surpassed 12 million euros. We've never uh, made more than 11 million uh, up until this year. When it comes to the communal fee, and that is something that Marian uh, is uh, probably most interested in, uh, we have passed the point of 15 million euros, although our plan was to uh, to have a uh, 12.5 million revenue uh, uh, from from the from the new investment or the, the the communal fees paid by the investors, which shows that not only that we manage again to 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 preserve political uh, to to preserve financial stability, but we've managed to to remain attractive for for investors and their interest 
to a large extent explains how did we come to the, to the point that despite all the challenges, we managed to, again, uh, uh, be in a position 10 days from the end of the year uh, uh, when we can speak about another very successful year uh, in, terms of, in terms of the city finances. Uh, how, do I ex how do I explain that? Well, uh, on the one hand, uh, the best way to get out of the crisis is through new investment. So I believe there is a, there is a, there's a common business logic in, in, in that, and we're very happy that many representatives of not only local business community, but the international business community recognize Podgorica as, a, as an attractive investment destination. In addition to that, we've also uh, done a lot to, to incentivize them to, to come to Podgorica and to invest. Uh, less than a year ago, we've created our own business club, which I think was a very important step in this direction. So within this forum, every once in a while, we have a chance to sit with these people, to hear about their problems, and to see how we should approach these problems and how should we help them solve these, these issues. So uh, as a result, I think we've built mutual trust. And that is uh, the second topic that I'd like to focus. I think as a city administration, we have managed to build a very solid reputation in that sense which is not easy in the Balkans. We, we all know that, uh, especially foreign investors, when they come to this part of the world, they come with a, with a sense of skepticism, so we need to put in extra effort in order to make sure that we're transparent, that they know that they're dealing with law-abiding people and that everything that we agree will be implemented in that particular manner. Uh, yesterday, we, we had a chance to, to hear uh, an interesting remark of that sort made by uh, the distinguished ambassador of the United States of America, uh, Ambassador Reinke, uh, who said that there are a lot of American investors who are still very skeptical in, in this regard. So having that in mind, we really try to, to build uh, the, 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 the trust you know, between uh, the city administration and, and, and these people, and I think we've managed. And in addition to that, we have also provided various incentives both to those who are already doing business in Podgorica in order to save every single uh, job that we have, which we desperately need at the moment, and at the same time to create preconditions for opening new ones. Uh, and uh, the, the project that you mentioned, Marianne, the business zones, uh, something that we have huge expectations for and uh, uh, we feel very encouraged with the uh, initial reaction of the, of the market, the fact that, as you mentioned, we've uh, got 17 offers, so 17 potential new projects with more than 2,000 new jobs and uh, the investment that is worth more than 310 million euros shows that Podgorica stands well in the eyes of the investors. And uh, I'd like to uh, give a part of that credit to you as well as a city manager whose team has pretty much done most of the job when it comes to the, uh, the business zone project. So I think despite all the challenges, we can be very proud of how we're finishing this year. And I hope with the normalization of epidemiological situation that uh, the next year may be even better and that next year we may even pass 100 million euros when it comes to the city budget revenues. That's, that's an interesting question. One is to be, to be, uh, to be brave because, uh, because of the reasons that I mentioned, I think it, it still takes some, uh, uh, I wouldn't say courage, but you know, um, something old, along those lines uh, for someone to, to, to come and, and, and invest uh, uh, in this part of Europe. Uh, again, we, we really need to work more uh, diligently on improving uh, our, our image as a, as, a, as a whole. So in that sense, I'll tell them to be, to be brave and to come because uh, this is also a place of an enormous potential and there are a lot of good stories and we need to focus on those stories, uh, but also to be patient I know it takes a lot of time for some things in Montenegro to, um, to take place. I, I know that our administration 
is still very very sluggish in uh, at least in certain aspects so even even for us in the city administration, it creates a lot of uh, tension sometimes when you need to wait for a, you know, a single paper for, for, for weeks or months. Um, you know, there, there are still way too many examples of uh, the situation in which you have a very uh, a serious potential investor who wants to come uh, despite all the, you know, maybe prejudice, hopefully, let's call them prejudice, uh, and to come and to invest and to hire new people, and, uh, uh, and we cannot uh, actually make that happen because, you know, some procedures take take uh, take forever. So just to uh, to get an assessment of the of the value of a plot or things along those lines. I mean, it's still way too, it's way too slow for us to be considered uh, a competitive investment destination. And it's been the case for, 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 for years. I'm not, I'm not sure that things are moving in the right direction. Uh, so we need, to, we need to be much faster, we need to be much more efficient because uh, money can go anywhere. So we're not the only place in the world where people, you know, May consider coming and investing money. So, I think, I think, you still need to be brave, uh, and you still need to be patient, in order to come and try to do business here. Uh, the good thing is that you know uh, there are positive examples, as I as I as I said, and there are examples that show that when we are focused, when we work hard, uh, that we can earn that trust and that our potential can be recognized, you know, by those uh, who are, you know, um, very um, relevant in the, in, the, in the world of business. Uh, just yesterday, we were very happy to hear the good news about our most important infrastructural project, which is the building of the new uh, wastewater uh, system and, and, and a plant. So we got another 23.4 million euros of, of grant from the, from the EU through the Western Balkans investment framework. So this is what happens when you do your homework. This is what happens when you prepare documentation. This is what happens when you show seriousness in the, in the communication with potential partners. So I'm absolutely convinced that, that, that you know, Montenegro, but not only Montenegro and not only Podgorica, but also the region as a whole has many uh, comparative advantages, but we just need to change certain habits. We just need to uh, understand that we're we're a part of the global market. Uh, you know that those people who went to Rijeka could have gone anywhere else, but they did not. They decided to go to Rijeka. Probably shows that my friend did a, did a good job. You know, preparing grounds. So I think we need to be aware of that. Uh, and uh, the more uh, the, the the faster we realize that the less brave and the less patient uh, the future investors will, will need to be in doing business with us. We cannot count on building marinas in Podgorica, obviously, uh, but there are many other things that we can do, so I would, I would call Podgorica maybe a, a, a small city uh, and some, you know, larger European uh, kind of framework, a small city with a uh, huge, huge potential. And uh, I really believe that we can do great things, provided that we start changing uh, the, the, the approach that is not very helpful. Uh, and I'm very encouraged uh, with the contacts that we recently had with uh, people, you know, not only in Montenegro, but from abroad, who are more than eager to, to come and to invest uh, in Podgorica and in Montenegro, we just we just need to make sure that you know things go uh, as uh, smoothly as possible, and we we facilitate that that process. So we don't need to desperately go around uh, looking for new investors. We just need to make sure that those who are already there and who want to come here, you know. Uh, feel that they have the support they, they, they need. I think it's the, 
biggest obstacle. Uh, I'm not sure whether I would be optimistic in that regard because as we speak, there are many open questions uh, that are very important for the future of this uh, city and this country. As we speak, we don't know what's going to happen with the uh, with the aluminum factory in Podgorica, which is by far the biggest exporter in Montenegro. Uh, so as long as that is the case, and as long as uh, we uh, you know, witness that kind of approach to the, uh, the private capital as a, as a, as a, as a whole, you know, uh, the, the approach with, which is founded on, on, on some sort of suspicion, you know, or uh, almost a, 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 a kind of moral question, uh, I, I think we, we will not move uh, uh, forward you know, not at least at the pace that we need as, as an underdeveloped country. So I think it's all up to us. We need to change the mindset. Once we do, I have no doubt that there will be many more investments in, in, in Podgorica and in Montenegro.